Tuttle Tuesday and our debut of the world's first kids cartoon about Bitcoin. Bitcoin and the Beast. So whether you're a Bitcoin nerd, newbie, or even a hater, buckle up because today's episode teaches about hard money, the dangers of inflation, and how Bitcoin actually works. So after 20 minutes, you'll probably know more about Bitcoin than the president. <laughs> Maybe definitely, but no more. <laughs> Maybe definitely. <laughs> okay, but before the episode starts, make sure you grab the adventure page if you haven't done that already. So, and that's available for this episode by scanning the QR code or going to angel.com slash adventure page. And if you find the hidden golden gummy during the episode, let us know at angel.com slash golden gummy for a chance to win a graphic novel. We'll reveal those winners right after the episode. So after the episode, we are so excited to welcome on Natalie Burnell, who we interviewed a few days ago. She'll be answering the questions you submitted last week. Natalie is a journalist, a Bitcoin expert, and podcaster, and we're super excited to get to talk to her. We'll also have a live trivia challenge after the episode to test your knowledge and win some prizes. Finally, we'll show a sneak peek of next month's episode. Yeah, you don't want to miss out on that one. As always, this show isn't funded by billionaires or Hollywood. It's funded by you. So thank you for investing, paying it forward, and buying graphic novels. As a reminder, the Ethan and Emily plushies are now available to ship. That's right. So you can get those at TuttleTwins.store. Yep, they'll go right out of our warehouse to you. But most importantly, the complete graphic novel set for all 12 episodes of Season 1 is available on our website right now for just $99 or one Bitcoin, whichever you want to do. Whichever you want to do. Yeah, <laughs> we'll take a Bitcoin. <laughs> so huge discount there, TuttleTwins.store. Make sure to check that out. If you enjoyed this episode, we hope you check out more at angel.com slash TuttleTwins or in the free Angel app. That's right. And without further ado, enjoy Bitcoin, Bitcoin and, and the, the Beast. beast. Emily, then we can leave. That creepy dot is getting closer! Who, me? <laughs> ah! It's a... It's a... Oh, yeah! A rock? <laughs> I'm sorry, how is that scary? What? Rocks are super scary. We chip windshields, we get stuck in shoes, and sometimes wrestle. I'm what they call a triple threat. Now hand over the rubies or I'll be forced to do this. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Is that how you think rock stars dance? What's the matter, can't handle my geological gyrations? <laughs> can't you just threaten our lives? Yeah, fine with me. <laughs> Let's go! You got wheels, but this rock can roll. <laughs> no! oh, not the face, not the face, not the face, not the face, not the face. Uh, how is he so fast? Uh, uh. Emily! <gasps> I got you now! Legends have only whispered of the great ruby treasure hidden here. <gasps> Mom? Who would keep a statue of Mom? This Rockefeller. Oh, snap. <laughs> <laughs> Smell what I'm cooking! Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah! Oh yeah, oh yeah! 
Dad. Oh, you should have seen your faces. I've been owning noobs like you since college. You two didn't stand a chance. Moneycraft, the game where you mine wealth and sometimes throw kids into volcanoes. You can't let us win like one time? Mm -mm. He says that would make us real life losers. Eugene, are you really gloating that you beat the twins? Yes. yes. Without me? What? Moneycraft, the, the game, game where you mine wealth, wealth and sometimes throw kids, throw kids into volcanoes. Oh, come on! I love yard sales. One dad's old stuff. Is another twins college fund. Or another twins funding for a film about unemployed college grads. Either way, if you're gonna sell my old stuff, I wanna make sure the money is going to something valuable. <sighs> we never did manage to beat this game. Morning, Tuttles. I didn't realize they picked up the trash on Saturdays. It's not trash, it's a yard sale. Whatever you say. <gasps> Is that a retro money crap gaming system? The game where you collect wealth and sometimes throw kids into volcanoes? Uh, I'll give you $10 for it. I'm not sure. 20? Uh, 50. This is pretty rare. Maybe we'll just hold on to it. Fine, I'll give you $100 for it. Final offer. Oh, cool. A retro money craft gaming system? I'll match whatever she's offering, but in Bitcoin. Bitcoin? You mean that made-up money? Isn't it basically just air? No! Wait, how did she get past my anti and booby trap? <laughs> well, that's what my father said. You really want made-up money or all of this? Uh... I'm gonna need a decision in the next five minutes. I got a date with a skate park. <laughs> la, la, la. Whew. And I'm walking away in five minutes, too, because ultimatums! <laughs> I mean, how is Bitcoin any better than cash if it's just made up money? All money is made up. Then what makes money, you know, good? Hold that thought. I need to buy more traps for intruders. Think your parents would be okay with a 20-foot pit in the front yard? Ah, forgiveness, not permission. Okay, Nale, twins! You will just be... Uh, four minutes. Ah! Hmm. Where to, Grandma? Back to ancient Rome? Or maybe we'll blast off to a dimension where toys rule the earth and humans are their playthings. Play with me. That is the most disturbing thing I've ever heard. I just need help with my online shopping for traps. Last time I accidentally ordered tramps. <laughs> well, hey, <laughs> thanks again. Anyway, I need to connect to the World Wide Web. You figured out quantum physics, but you can't connect to Wi-Fi? It's dial-up. Derek, get off of the landline. <laughs> <Derek>. <laughs> Finally! Now I just need to check my AOL. Uh. <laughs> Whoa! What's up with the time tunnel? This isn't a time tunnel, it's the internet! The place where freedom thrives! Is that the government spying on someone through their webcam? <sighs> hey, Creepo! <laughs> I guess I'll have to do it the old-fashioned way. Okay, kids, help Grandma find CorinneTraps.com. Last time I tried, I went to CorinneTraps.com, and that girl has no flow. My name is Corinne, and I'm here to say government surveillance is the price we all have to pay. The NSA is here to stay. Sing it! So you kids are tech savvy. Where can I buy some traps around here? We've never been inside the internet before. Ugh, Generation Z, fine, I'll ask my guy. Vamos! I know a guy that can help us, but stay close, don't talk to anyone, and whatever you do, don't mention investment opportunities. Hey, wanna hear about an investment opportunity? Hmm.
Hey, Gabby. Hola, expensive pizza. <laughs> oh, cool. What drink much wow? What more drink much more wow? <laughs> I'm more than just a picture, man. I'm a revolution. Did you just screenshot me, bruh? And the, and the, and I barely got it. Espera un momento. Satoshi! Gabby, how did you find me? The same way I found my lost dentures. Oh, smell. You smell like dangerous. Hey, now. Listen, I need someone to help me navigate the URLs. The internet has changed a lot since I invented it with Al Gore. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding, he did nothing. Well, I am quite savvy on the interwebs. Twins, this is Satoshi Nakamoto. Brilliant innovator, disruptor, and the anonymous inventor of Zitcoin. It's Bitcoin. Oh. It's not named for your acne? Hey, you can't prove I have that. After inventing Zit... Bitcoin? Satoshi disappeared and hasn't been heard of since 2010. Oh, well, we won't ask you about your identity or how many zits you have, but we do need to ask you an important question. Okay, so we're kind of torn whether to sell our vintage game for dollars or Bitcoin. Which one's better? Hmm, I could tell you. Or I could show you, because we're in the internet. Whoopsie, this is the early internet. Long before we used paper money, people used things like seashells. That makes sense. They're so beautiful. And they make amazing swimsuits. Oh, my eyes! This brilliant Algonquin nation would make beads called wampum out of seashells. When Europeans arrived, the Algonquins often traded with them using the wampum as money. The wampum was an excellent choice for currency because it was hard. Good money is hard? We should use my gummy bears. They've been in my pockets for weeks. Oh, ow! Ah, uh, no. When I say hard, I mean it's hard to get or create. The gummy bears aren't just a terrible idea because they're gross. Hey! But they're a terrible idea because they're way too easy to make. Well, what's stopping the Algonquin people from just making a million beads? Only a limited number of shells show up on the ocean floor each year. I got one! And each wampum bead was crafted by hand, which took a lot of time and skill. So when a Hanu trades his furs for beads, his hard work of hunting is being represented by something equally hard. Money that's hard to make keeps its value. That's great! The wampum sounds like a perfect form of money. The Europeans thought so, until things changed. When specialized tools arrived from Europe, making wampum quickly became easy. The Europeans also began to create fake wampum without seashells, using other materials like stone or glass. Suddenly, the beads a Hanu saved weren't worth much for trade with Europe. When money became easy to make, all its trade value washed away. Okay, so we need money that's hard to find. Uh, what about gold? A good idea. Gold is rare and hard to mine, but because gold was heavy and hard to carry, Government started using paper money that represented gold stored in a big vault. Oh, like a coupon where you redeem $5 of paper money for $5 of gold. Exactly! The government couldn't print more money without mining more gold, and it worked great! People built wealth! Society thrived! Paper money makes so much sense! But then governments became greedy, and instead of making the same amount of paper money as gold, they just started printing new money out of thin air. Paper money makes no sense! People worked their whole lives saving paper money, only to lose everything to inflation when the government made creating money easy. That sounds like the wampum seashells all over again! <sighs> when money is easy to make, society begins to break. So, how do we make money that's easy to carry but hard to create? Well, one solution is Bitcoin. <laughs> Back in 2008, I became fed up with government money, with the corruption, the manipulation, so I created a digital currency. Money you keep on a computer, right? Exactly. Digital money that can be sent directly from one person to another without any bank or government involved. And the best part? It's hard money. 
the guy who dissed my gummy bears thinks computer money is hard. It's the hardest money ever invented! Bitcoin is very hard to make more of. Each new coin gets added to the supply only after a computer works very hard to solve a math problem, where there's no shortcut and solving it costs a lot of energy and time. Okay, but if it's on a computer, can't I just copy and paste? <laughs> Not with Bitcoin. You see, there's a public record of every Bitcoin ever created. It's called the blockchain. It's like a puzzle, and each Bitcoin has its own unique shape. And because everyone has a copy of the public record, if someone tries to fake a Bitcoin, it won't fit the puzzle and will be rejected by the network before anyone can use it. That's why Bitcoin is so safe from criminals and the government. <laughs> you said criminals twice. And unlike dollars, which can be printed endlessly, there will only ever be 21 million Bitcoin. It's almost impossible to inflate. The only way to get it is to earn it or buy it from someone who has. Aha! No offense, but if you control Bitcoin, couldn't you manipulate it just like the government? I don't control it. No one person does. It's controlled by a public network of Bitcoin users that anyone can join. So if someone wanted to change something in Bitcoin's code, they would need to get the majority of the millions of Bitcoin users to agree to it. Or the change doesn't happen. And when has the majority of us agreed on anything? One black toilet paper is garbage! Touché. Wow, I didn't know made up money could make so much sense. Today, millions of people send Bitcoin instantly and cheaply to each other around the world without any bank or government involved. And because Bitcoin is hard money you can't just print more of, the more people who use it, the more valuable it becomes. Emily, if we take Lyle's Bitcoin, we could be rich. I could pay for college entirely. You could outsource your movie and pay to have your name in the credits. <laughs> Slow down. I'm not saying that Bitcoin will make you rich quick or even at all. Right now, only about 1% of the world owns Bitcoin. And because it's still being adopted, some days it goes up and even down. Also, investments, though potentially lucrative, can be risky. Only, only invest, invest what you're, you're willing, willing to, to lose. lose. We no. know. Wow, I think I get it. Good money should be easy to use, but hard to create. And because Bitcoin is digital, it's fast and cheap to use. And the blockchain makes it hard to inflate. Thanks, Mr. Satoshi. What? Mr. Satoshi? He's gone? Or was he ever even here? Oh, oh smells like dentures. Yep, he was here. Grandma, I think we know our decision. Definitely. Perfect. Ooh, a pop-up. Let's click it. No, no wait. Come on. No. No. Grandma, you play Minecraft? Me and Satoshi have been playing since 2010. Why do you think he disappeared? We're obsessed. I'm a level 100 tycoon. Yeah, well, we love it too, but we really don't have time for this right now. Lyle's out there. We're in here, and in a few minutes, the deal is off, and we lose our chance to make any money. Can't you just blast us back to reality? Sorry, but video game wheelchairs don't have enough power to blast into different dimensions. I don't make the rules. How are we going to get out of here? Emily, if we want to get out of here, I think we need to beat the game. But every time we've played, we've lost. No pressure, just win or we get stuck in here forever, like Drumanji over there. Ah, uh, Gabby. Drew? All right, we can do this. We just need to fill up our wealth bars before the game timer runs out. So, conveniently, 10 seconds before Lyle leaves. Yes, Emily, it's called a ticking clock and it adds a sense of urgency to move our narrative forward. Okay, Moneycraft actually has a great money system. The currency here is rubies, which are really hard to mine, keeping the value stable. Yes, our wealth bars are almost full. If we could just find a few more rubies, I think we're there. And without Dad here to stop us, there's nothing to slow us down. Hmm. <laughs> The twins won't mind if we do a little test run. Try before you buy, am I right? Move on! <sighs> I 
I've got a trick that'll help me crush this game. Up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, B, A, and start! to create anymore, the rubies are losing their value. She's making herself richer <laughs> while making everyone else poorer. <laughs> when money's easy to make, society begins to break. Ugh, this is just like the tickets at the carnival. Did she learn nothing? I've learned nothing! <laughs> <laughs> just like the government printing trillions of dollars in the real world. Sorry, I had to clear my throat. Just like the government printing trillions of dollars in the real world! We have to find hard money to use instead, and we need to do it fast! Moneycraft, you're about to get Bitcoin! Finally! Hit it, Eric! <laughs> what? You knew where this Bitcoin mine was the whole time? If I gave you all the answers, that would make you into real life losers. <laughs> Puny villagers think you can come after me? Try this on for size. Summoned me? I need you to keep an ungrateful mob at bay while I copy more rubies for their but mostly my benefit. <laughs> Rock on. Keep going. We gotta be close. Aw, that's it? Ha! Good luck getting rich off that measly counterfeit coin. It's working! Look! Even the non-player characters are mining Bitcoin! And the more people who use it, the higher its value will grow! We're almost there! We're solving the money problem! And unlike the rubies, our Bitcoin is actually holding its value! But we still have a Kren problem. Why won't you NPCs accept my rubies? To have you worthless uh... rubies! I'm out of here! <laughs> oh. What the heck? Oh. Maybe I need to put the cheat code back in? Here, give me a Bitcoin and you can have my whole bag of rubies. I'll just copy this too. Don't know! She's trying to hack the system! Okay. Copy, paste! No! Yes! Wow! <laughs> <laughs> she can't manipulate or copy the money! Copy, paste! Copy, paste! The only way for her to get it is to mine it or buy it just like everyone else. It's hard to make and it can't be messed with by power hungry people like Corinne. Now that's what I call hard money. What? Ugh! Here, take your ridiculous and inflatable money! Yes, we did it! We finally beat Moneycraft! And just in time! Emily, look! Aw, they're giving Corinna a hug. Oh, no! What? Unhand me, peasants! You can't just... No, no! Ah! Traps.com? I'll take one, please. Man, I love this game. And we didn't just fill up our own wealth bars. The whole town is thriving. So the little twin boy and girl characters attacked you? Well, in a way, they changed the money to some highly secure peer-to-peer -peer digital money while I was trying to peaceably rob everyone. 
Peer-to-peer -peer digital currency. That sounds a lot like... Vile! Corinne, we made it back! From the house? Yes. And we've made our decision. Oh, good. So, are you going to take the real money or the made-up money? Real! Made up! Uh, made up! Real. Sorry, we're both trying to say the same thing. Look, lots of things can make money good or bad, but we want our college savings slash film fund to gain value over time. The U.S. dollar is easy money and Bitcoin is hard. Easy money loses value over time and hard money gains. So, Lyle, the game is yours. Yeah! Money grab, money grab, money grab, money grab. Well, money have grab. fun with your fake money. We, we will. will. Ah, you win this round. You just watched the world's first kid show to break down Bitcoin. If you loved it and want to spread this message of Bitcoin and the importance of hard money to even more families, please pay it forward. You can send us Bitcoin at angel.com slash lightning, or you can send us paper money at angel.com slash tuttlepiff. Thank you so much. What'd you think? So, yeah. Um, love it or hate it, that was our Bitcoin episode. We'd love to hear what you think in the comments. Let us know. And uh, now I have a very special guest, somebody who I'm thrilled to introduce you to. Daniel had to step out, but this person, man, this person's even better. All right, let's, let's do the reveal. So, okay, get out of there. It is I, Satoshi Nakamoto. I asked for Satoshi, guys. All right, second best. This is Tyler Stevens. Um, he was the director on this episode. Yep. Who? Somebody's getting fired. Who? <laughs> I said Satoshi. Anyways. Um, anyways, yeah. If you loved that episode, it was the great writing. If you hated that episode, um, Tyler was the director. <laughs> Guilty. So, but... Um, yeah, uh, I hope you enjoyed that episode. Ethan, how long did that take you to direct? Whew, I mean, it felt like forever. I don't know. It was getting that messaging in any way clear. Was, it was a challenge, that's for sure. But uh, yeah, it was exciting. We got a lot of our information from a, a book called The Bitcoin Standard, and we have an interview with its author, Safedean. And uh, yeah, it's exciting. It's, it's not often, uh, we base all of these episodes off of a, a book or something historical, and it's not often that that book author is alive. So... Here's what Safedean had to say about it. So I just watched the Tuttle Twins Bitcoin and the Beast episode, and I have to say uh, I really liked it. I enjoyed watching it with my kids. Uh, my daughter was absolutely amazed at the concept of a uh, Tuttle Twins and Satoshi crossover. Um, she loves the Tuttle Twins and she loves Satoshi, and she's heard a lot of stories about both. So she was really excited about the idea of the, all of them uh, meeting together. And I think the episode was really well done. I enjoyed uh, how well they communicated the real essence of the idea of hard money. And I think Bitcoin is great for illustrating this lesson. And I like that it was an economics lesson. It's, it's, it's an economics class and an economic lesson that's enormously important. That's unfortunately not taught in most uh, schools and universities today. But it is really important to understand the difference between easy money and hard money. And people generally only learn that lesson the very hard way when their currency collapses because the government has printed an enormous amount of the supply because nothing stops them from printing an enormous amount. So I think uh, the episode does a great job of illustrating this. Um, and it uh, uses the uh, story of the characters um, and the video game setting to communicate how easy money takes away the effort that you work for whereas hard money can preserve it and um, i thought it was very well done so congratulations on such a great episode and uh, i hope to see you guys do more bitcoin work Whew, he liked it <laughs> that was a uh, yeah it's always kind of a gamble <laughs> but yeah really really good to hear from safety and, and it was so nice talking to him um uh, we have a lot of fun things planned. We have some Tuttle trivia coming up. We have uh, a really fun interview with Natalie, a Bitcoin expert, and then a sneak peek, so stay tuned. Uh, be but before I get to that, I would uh, feel ungrateful if I didn't thank the attendees of the Texas Homeschool Coalition 
uh, conference. Man, it was amazing. I was there last week. I met hundreds of you Tuttle fans, and it was so cool to see you guys come out of the woodwork and uh, and, and just, yeah, uh, meet you in person. Um, Aiden, happy birthday on Sunday. I know you're, you're watching, uh, and so I uh, hope you had a great birthday, man. Yeah, and if you want us to come to these conferences, we love doing it. We love meeting you guys. Yeah, just let us know in the comments because... Yeah, we'd love to go to, to as, as many of these as we can. Yeah, comment where you live, and uh, if there's enough kind of comments of "oh, come to California," then we'll have to come to, we'll have to come to California. We do that for you guys. We do that for you. <laughs> but yeah, next we have Tuttle Trivia. Quiz time. Okay, so if you've never done this before, Tuttle Trivia is a very fun, interactive thing we love to do. So. Um, we are going to test your knowledge on Bitcoin and on the episode. So, um, kids, see if your parents will let you use their phones. And we're going to go to joinmyquiz.com and then type in this code. So go to joinmyquiz.com. You're all going to be competing, and we're going to have a great time. And what do the winners, the top three winners of this trivia competition get, Tyler? Uh, it's exciting stuff. You can either have, you can choose either a graphic novel or a little bit of Bitcoin. So, uh, yeah. It's a fun fun choice. And if you don't own Bitcoin, this is a great opportunity. We will send you some Bitcoin if you win. <laughs> so, yeah, let's go to joinmyquiz.com. It's got to be a good jingle there. Corinne rap. There's got to be a good Corinne rap. My name is Corinne, and I'm here to say, go to joinmyquiz.com. Today. Today. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody commented in the live stream that we've been rapping a lot in our most recent episodes. Yeah, I hadn't thought about it. <laughs> and I directed on both of those episodes, or co-directed one of them, but yeah. <laughs> All right, so let's get this show on the road. Let's get this, this quiz started. Michael, we good to go? All right, we're good to go. Where does Corinne drop her rap singles? Ooh. Is it A, sicksocialist.com? You. Corinne Raps? No, excuse me. CorinneCares.com. Markstape.com. Or CorinneRaps.com. Which could it be? I would go to Markstape.com. <laughs> <laughs> I need to buy that. <laughs> yeah. Good old rap about Karl Marx. All right. And the answer is CorinneRaps.com. You can go there right now. That's great. <laughs> okay. Next, next question. What is the name of the creator of Bitcoin? Is it A, Sataki? B, Suzuki? C, Satoshi? Or four, Pikachu? <laughs> I think it's Pikachu, Tyler. I know. You got to catch them all. And that's the creator. He's the most elusive. Well, he was the smartest one. I think he talks in some of them. Yeah, he does. Yeah, yeah. Pikachu, Pikachu. That's, I think it was in the Bitcoin white paper. Yeah. And the answer is Satoshi. <laughs> All right, let's go to the next question. When money is easy to blank, society begins to break. Is it A, fake? Is it B, make? C, bake? Or D, snake? When money's easy to snake, society begins to... There's just something about that that just feels right. Yeah, it rolls off the tongue. All right, and the answer is... Make! Make! Next question. Man, if we had gotten that wrong, that would have been awkward. That would have been very awkward. What's the name of the retro video game the twins are selling? Is it A, Money Mine? B, Angry Coins? C, Inflation Monster? Or D, Money Crab? Inflation Monster, the game where you mind well, <laughs> and sometimes throw kids into volcanoes. Anyone? Anyone. <laughs> and the answer Three. is... Money Crab! Hard money means money that is blank. Hard to understand. Hard to touch. Hard to create. Hard when it hits you in the face. I mean, I think there's some of these apply to all. To all. Uh, I think Bitcoin can hit you in the face if it's like a if it's like a thumb drive or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One of those Bitcoin shaped ones. Yeah. And the answer is hard to, to create. create. Good to move on? Great. Quick, draw your best rock monster. Hmm. How do we how do we award these ones? You know, this is uh everyone's a winner. 
No, I'm just kidding. Some people are very, very much winners on this one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a terrible drawer, so I... Uh, I mean, draw for fun, but you might not be a winner on it. Yeah, that's right. I could not animate this cartoon. I should try and animate a scene of it, and you guys would see how bad the cartoon can get. <laughs> Look at those, guys. Look at those. Nice. Some of those are winners. <laughs> Some are less winners. Some are less winners. We're not going to say everyone's a winner on this show. Okay, next question. What hard money do the Algonquin people use? Is it Bitcoin? Gold-threaded cloth? Beads made from seashells? Or collectible Tuttle Twins plushies? What could it be? Ooh. <laughs> History. These were found in the wild natively. <laughs> yeah, they're just recreations. Yeah, these were grown on bushes. And the answer is beads, beads made from, made from seashells. seashells or wampum. That's right. All right. When the government backed their paper money with blank, people built wealth and society thrived. Is it silver, gold, copper, or hardened pieces of crusty gum? What could it be? I mean, once I, I feel like one is harder than the alternative. That is true. <laughs> <laughs> I think. Yeah. That's right. I think I think the Fed is full of hardened pieces of crusty gum. And the answer is gold. gold. <clears throat> Should we do an episode on gold? Comment below. Okay, the only way for Corinne to get Bitcoin is to blink just like everyone else. Grow it or steal it. Invest. Believe in it. Mine it or buy it. I what would the answer be if it was the dollar? Can you grow Bitcoin? Can you multiply your Bitcoin? Maybe. Can you invest it? <laughs> and the answer is mine, mine it or, or buy, buy it. it. You guys are crushing it. What is the network of users called who all keep a record of the transactions? Is it the, the Bit Network? The blockchain? Web4? Or Facebook? This is a tough one. I think it's Facebook, but I'm not <laughs> sure. I think they do have their own cryptocurrency they're trying to get, right? They do. Yeah, very trustworthy. It just takes your information. Zuckercoin, I think <laughs> is what it's called. And the answer is the blockchain. <laughs> I really hope it was. Yeah, me too. So how many Bitcoin will ever be mined? One million. Twenty-one million. A hundred million. Or one million each year. I think you're talking about the dollar. Mm. And I think it's a lot yeah. more than that. Million. I think it's more in the trillion. <laughs> And the answer, this is the last question, right? And the answer is 21, 21 million. million. Oh, guys, if you think about it, 21 million, how many people in the United States will be able to own Bitcoin? One Bitcoin. 21 million. 21 million. <laughs> <laughs> kind of an arbitrary number. Yeah. Okay. While they're tallying up the votes, we're, our system's a lot faster than Dominion. <laughs> While they're tallying up the votes. Uh, we are going to announce the winners of the Golden Gummy Cons Competition. All right, so I'm told. It was on screen for about two seconds, so I'm impressed if you guys found it. Yeah. Um, the Golden Gummy winners. All right. Are you sure there's this many? We doing more? Oh, they're families. Oh. Okay. All right. So the first one is Emily Mormon. More man, more man, more man. Sorry, <laughs> uh, the Ramirez family. So Xander, Ruby, and Kason, Grayson, and Jackson Unger, and Lev and Ari Fogelson, and then finally the Ryan family. They're all Ryan's. So yeah, there's a little bit more than three there, but our mistake, your your prize. So uh, <laughs> yeah, reach out to us, guys, if we called your name, um, and we will get you a graphic novel of your choice for winning the Golden Gummy finding that first. And if you have found the Golden Gummy, still email us. We always send a special discount code or, or prize. So, all right. And without further ado, let's announce the winners, winners, winners of the Tuttle Trivia. Do we got them coming in? Okay. Yes. Here we go. So we have Copernicus fan. And I think that is number one, Jared. I think it's me. <laughs> we have Austin girls. And Grandma Rocks. Okay, so you three, hit us up, email us, and we're going to send you your choice of a graphic novel or straight-up Bitcoin. 
And uh, once again, apologies for the glitches. We are trying to perfect this system, and we are uh, far from it. So thank you for your patience. You guys are the best. All right, and just the last, before we get to Natalie, just the last kind of shout out, we have these graphic novel, novel bundles. I'm told we are down to the last few of them, at least the complete set. So if you want the complete set, you're looking for it, we're gonna be out of stock soon. So uh, if you'd like to get it, get it tonight. It's the best deal ever, uh, $99 for all of these. So it's such a steal or one Bitcoin. Whichever, whichever is better. You can oh. send us one, one Bitcoin. We'll, we'll take, <laughs> we'll take, take whichever. <laughs> and we then, also have the plushies. So Ethan, Emily, and yeah. As a reminder, still. this Ethan can age, so it's great. <laughs> yeah, so he'll, he'll grow up with you. <laughs> he'll grow with you. <laughs> he starts, you know, complaining about school and ends complaining about inflation. It's yep. great. All right, and so without further ado, we're going to kick it over to Natalie. She was just a pleasure to talk to. We were able to get your questions that you had in the group, and we were able to bring them to her, a Bitcoin expert. So um, sit back. Hopefully you learned something. I know I learned something from this little interview with her. And yeah, let's take it away with Natalie. <laughs> All right, guys. So welcome. We want to welcome Natalie Burnell to Tuttle Twins. She is a world-class Bitcoin ex uh, sorry, expert educator as well, reporter and podcaster. Natalie, welcome to Tuttle Tuesday. Thank you so much for having me. Excited to be here. Did I miss anything? I'm sure there's many more accolades that you can tout. <laughs> no, you're you're being too kind. I, I just hope to be a Bitcoin educator. That's I'm grateful that I was able to transition my career from news to be able to teach people about Bitcoin and hard money. So uh, thanks for having me. Awesome. Yeah. P pleasure to speak with you. Um, so the first question, maybe the most important question of the night, what's your favorite video game? My favorite video game? Oh, we yes. got to take it back to the 90s. Uh, Mario Brothers. Yeah. <laughs> great. Great. Awesome. Okay. Now that we got that out of the way, Mario Brothers. Great. Great. Um, <laughs> so let's get into Bitcoin. What did you think of that episode? Just high level. Oh, I thought it was fantastic. You know, I, I really commend you for teaching kids about what money is and what real money is, because I feel like the world today, we just use monopoly money, essentially, where someone could hit a button and create as much as they want, and certain people are in control, and that's at the expense of everybody else. And so I think it's really important to start kids early, not only understanding money, but what it takes to earn money and the value of you know hard work, a good work ethic. And so I thanks for, for doing that kind of episode. It's really important. Yeah. Wow. Thank you for the kind words. That's that's awesome that someone as entrenched in Bitcoin like yourself, we were trying to, you know, uh, give kids a first taste of what Bitcoin is. So I'm really glad that it's working um, at least at a higher level, you know, with someone who's who's very deep into the Bitcoin space. So, so, they so glad even you got that. Satoshi. I mean, how cool is that? Uh, I it's know. really, I think, I think all the kids around the world will someday know the name Satoshi. So I, I love that that was incorporated in it. <laughs> May have been a bit of blasphemous for us to 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 try and personify him to the Bitcoin community, <laughs> but um, so that's great. Um, just high level again, like how did you get into Bitcoin? Sure. So I was actually a news reporter for 10 years covering all sor sorts of stories. But I think the seed was planted for me when I was very young because I saw my parents uh, come to the U.S. W we're immigrants from Poland. I saw them work really, really hard. And I always, um, I always thought that the American dream represented, you know, the idea that if you work really hard, you can make anything happen. You can achieve any dream that you want. And I think every single year that I, I, and also after I became a reporter, I realized that that dream is feeling further and further away. So people would work really hard, but then still not be able to pay for the education, buy the house, you know, take care of their families. And I wondered why. And when I was in college, my parents were the victims of the great financial crisis. So just as they were able to sort of achieve a small version of the American dream, they were able to buy their first home in the U.S they lost it um, almost just as fast. And, uh, and and they had to file for bankruptcy. And watching that really left an impression on me because I felt like the system is so unfair. Like, how could this happen to people who are good people, work hard, pay their taxes, play by all the rules, and suddenly, you know, millions of people were in the same boat. They lost their homes. 
And so I, I had a question in the back of my mind, you know, why did this happen? How could it happen? And I, I started to, you know, report on different issues around the different markets that I, I was reporting in. And a lot of people were facing the same thing, that every single year things got more expensive. It was harder and harder to afford the middle class life in America. But no one really could explain why, right? People started to point the blame. Oh, it's this political party's fault. Oh, it's the corporation's fault. And not a lot of people actually look at the core of our system, which is the financial system, which is our money. And so when I learned about Bitcoin, I was first exposed to it in 2017. I started to peel back the layers and realized how much I didn't know about how money is created, what money is, you know, who's in charge of the money in our country and in other countries around the world. And once I did, I, I realized that there's a very big problem. We can identify the problem. And Bitcoin is really the solution that can hopefully bring about a lot of abundance and prosperity because now people are are working and creating value as opposed to, you know, the, the people closest to the money prints are being the only one who benefit. Wow, what an inspiring story and 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 tragic as well. Yeah, the, the, the story, just seeing that wealth just disappear. I mean, mm -hmm. many of our kids... Um, I think our most popular episode to date has been the inflation monster episode. So they are well versed in inflation. They complain about it to their parents at Costco, you know, and a lot of our families, <laughs> they're, they're very, you know, targeted. Inflation is bad. Let's stop reckless government spending. Um, right. But what I imagine there's a few of them who are just skeptical that Bitcoin is the solution to it. I mean, what would you kind of say to that? I would say that I was one of them. I really entered the space and I thought what so many people do. I thought, well, it's digital, so it could be hacked. I thought, oh, this is similar to a stock. There's a ton of risk in it. But, you know, the reason I thought those things is because I had taken very little time to study it. And so people today, they make comments and, and opine on Bitcoin when they have done very little homework and they haven't actually studied the network and how it works. They haven't studied our financial system. And so I just urge people to take a little bit of time because you can always decide maybe it's not for you. But I don't know anyone who really understands Bitcoin who is against it, who isn't a full on Bitcoiner and a Bitcoin taxi. When you start to really understand it, you know how bulletproof the, the technology network is and why it's so important to have hard money for this digital era that we live in. Then you start to realize that Bitcoin is, is the only form of hard money that we can actually trust. And I think that it'll change the world. I really do. I know that probably sounds Pollyanna-ish, but that's okay. I'm, I I believe that we will create the world we want to see. We need to focus on that, not on the problems and not fighting amongst one another. We need to focus on what's good and how to build and how to cooperate and how to create. And, and Bitcoin allows for all of that. So I'm really excited about it. I love it. I love it. Thank you so much. And and yeah, if uh, for, for any fans who are haters of Bitcoin, uh, just, yeah, do, do your research. And, uh, yeah. It still may not be for you, but at least you'll have done the research, right? And I, I know for me, it took a few years of, of research and just learning more and more about it for me to, to become a Bitcoin believer. Um, if sure. it's okay most with you. Of oh, us sorry. Needed multiple, most of us needed multiple touch points, right? I mean, you're exposed <laughs> to Bitcoin, you're skeptical, you kind of shy away from it. Then, you know, it comes into your life again. You see it again. Maybe you get a little bit curious. It does take a little bit of time. I mean, I, I have to say I had to put in the thousands of hours to really trust it because if I'm going to be talking about something, I want to not only understand it, but I, I want to be able to say that I actually have my money where my mouth is and I do with Bitcoin because I understand it to the level that I do. Love it. Love it. Love it. Um, I wanted to read three questions from our audience um, okay. and kind of put you on the spot a little bit. Um, so here's one. What's to stop an online platform or government from stopping your account if the only money we have is online in the future? So an example, the Canadian truckers bank accounts were stopped and they were unable to take money out. Um, I understand those were bank accounts, but couldn't it still happen with an online money system? So this is what highlights the problem with centralized systems. So there are hot wallets in Bitcoin and cold wallets. Hot wallets are associated with platforms that are essentially online banks. And if the government doesn't like something that they're doing, there is that, that potential risk. Now, we want to believe that we're you know, living in the West, these Western democracies, they, they, they're going to protect our freedoms. But as you mentioned, in Canada, we've already seen them trying to cut off the on-ramps and really go after people who they feel are doing something against 
what the powers that be want. Um, with Bitcoin, though, if you have it in self custody, if you have it in cold storage, that is your property and no one can confiscate it from you. You have the seed phrase. You can even carry it and you can you can go across any border and no one can take your Bitcoin, which I think is super powerful. And so this is something that can't be shut down by any government. That's why it's so important to have, because today, as as I think control and, and centralization and the concentration of power increases, we really need something to protect ourselves, to protect our, our sovereignty, to protect our freedom and to allow us to transact based on value, not based on who's in power and what they want. Hmm. Very, yeah, very interesting. So, yeah, not your keys, not your wallet, or not your crypto. Is that kind of the yeah. the, He's the, not your coin. the community? Not your coin. So make sure That's it's true. in a cold storage if you're gonna um, if you're gonna yeah uh, join in on a, a big trucker protest <laughs> and you need a little <laughs> extra funds from some Tuttle families. Um, <laughs> that's great. Thank you. Um, okay, so here's one. This and maybe this goes from someone just familiar with cryptocurrencies, but maybe not so much the difference between Bitcoin and others. Why is Bitcoin important and not Dogecoin or some other coin? Can't I still make infinite blockchain money by making an infinite amount of kinds of coins? Yeah, so you really can't replicate the network effect of Bitcoin. Bitcoin is the, the original blockchain that has been able to reach that level of distribution where it can't be 51% attacked because you would need mm -hmm. so much energy and so much money that it's virtually impossible now. And so you have a blockchain that is truly de decentralized and it is scarce. There's a capped supply. There will never be more than 21 million. And the rest of the projects that have come out afterwards, they're almost you know imitations. A lot of them resemble companies. So I would refer to them more as digital equities and digital securities mm. as opposed to the commodity and the form of property that Bitcoin is. And so for me, it, it's a lot more risky to wade in the waters of the crypto world because you don't know what the intentions are of the founders. So for some of the you know tokens that are out there, the developers' plans for that token are not even clear. Um, mm. and, and then you introduce questions about consensus mechanisms like proof of stake which means that the people who have more of the token have more of the power to validate transactions. That replicates our current system of fiat. Bitcoin is the only one that is truly decentralized and that levels the playing field so that no one has an advantage. And so that's why I trust that system the most. And there is a really big difference. Uh, Bitcoin is like the internet. It cannot be shut down. There is no corporation, no board of governors, no CEO, no language. No, it's, it's completely neutral and decentralized, whereas the others, um, you can't really say the same thing for them. So you're saying I should like get off the wait list for the Chinese digital yuan? <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, no central bank digital currency. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. Yeah. Sounds, sounds good. <laughs> um, okay. This is a, a bigger one. Um, um, how can we trust Bitcoin when it's so volatile? Well, you're thinking about it in fiat price, right? I think I think that's because our current system is so volatile. And so it reflects in Bitcoin because Bitcoin is right now priced in the old system. And that's what we're trying to move away from. And, and thank goodness that we have a system, this parallel alternative that we can opt into peacefully. Because when you look into the future and, you know, I challenge our political leaders, what is the solution to all of the debt that we have? Because the solutions that they are proposing are just to spend more money and to create more debt. And that's not going to get us to a place of abundance in the future. I mean, people are working harder and harder for money that is worth less. And they're trying to figure out, how do I save? So a lot of people have used their houses as savings accounts. They're trying to you know, become stock brokers, stock traders in, in, in the background. Or they have to become Airbnb landlords. I mean, that's not what... The system should look like the system should allow for people to work hard and with technology which is supposed to drive prices down our lives should be getting easier and richer every single year and instead we see the opposite so that's why it's like when you hone in on the money system you realize there needs to be something that fixes it because right now we're on a credit-based system so we just continue to go further and further into debt we don't create growth we don't have real productivity and we don't save, we don't have capital that can help us create what, what we're gonna create in the future. And Bitcoin can solve all of that. So, you know, I would, I would just urge people to ask themselves, how do they save? 
how do they plan for their future? And why do we live in a system where everything is getting more expensive when technology is supposed to allow us to live cheaper, more efficient lives? And then you start to drive at the, at the root of the problem, which is fiat and a debt-based system. And now we can opt out and we can be in a system of value and merit, which is Bitcoin. Love it. Love it. I'm sold. Okay. So I am, let's say I'm an 11-year-old kid. I'm watching. What do I do now? How do, how do I get into Bitcoin? <laughs> you know what? You're going to start earning Bitcoin from your parents for doing your homework, doing the chores around the house. Be like, yo, I got to get some Bitcoin, mom and dad. Can I, can I mow the lawn for some Bitcoin? Uh, you know, it's so funny. I was just talking to a, a Bitcoin parent, and that's exactly what, what their kids do. They are earning Bitcoin for, for uh, getting their homework done, getting on the, the you know, honors list at school. So try earning some Bitcoin. Whether it's on the lemonade, if you're going to have a lemonade stand, you've got to say, you accept, at least you accept Bitcoin, but you got to request it too. <laughs> Love it. Remember this, kids. <laughs> you just <laughs> ask your parents, I want my allowance in Bitcoin. Repeat after me. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You'll thank Natalie in, in, in a couple of years, 10 years at least. <laughs> <Well>. <laughs> so, uh, all right, Natalie. Well, thank you so much Mom, on behalf of the thousands of Tuttle Twins uh, viewers. This is such a treat to be able to talk with you, have you answer our questions. And uh, yeah, have fun changing the world and, uh, and doing everything you're doing for the Bitcoin community. Well, we are all changing the world together. If you're watching, you are the future that's going to change the world. I'm really grateful to be in this space, and I'm, I'm grateful for Bitcoin, and I think, I think it's going to make the world a better place. I do. That was great. Yeah. Hope you guys learned something? I learned something. Yeah, she's, she's smart. <laughs> she's really smart. <laughs> So guys, thanks for sticking with us. Um, as a reminder, if you were some of the top uh, three of that trivia game, you're going to email admin at tuttletwins.tv for the prize. And we apologize for the glitches. Um, we are imperfect and our systems are flawed. But that doesn't... It's, it's a metaphor for it's, government it's or something. It's a metaphor for, for government, yeah. for centralization. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks for coming guys. It was it was great great to have you. So we're going to we're going to kick it off and we're going to show you a sneak peek of episode 4 and um but until next time. So long and thank you for joining Tuttle Tuesday. See ya. It seems like now the umpire is favoring our team, probably because Corinne is so intense. <laughs> Should I admit the umpire made the wrong call? That was a metal bat! I'd like you to meet George Be Washington. Maybe clean your glasses. George, George Washington. Washington.